Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of JMC Edu Trends, a discussion that informs, inspires, and transcends. To all our first-time viewers, this program streams live on www.facebook/hosemariacollege and on YouTube at JMC Edu Trends. Don't forget to type in your comments and questions, send your emojis, click the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you would be notified of future discussions on JMC Edu Trends. Without much delay, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the program host of today's discussion. A great Monday morning, everyone. Let's start this week with another fruitful session of JMC Edutrends, an online discussion that informs, inspires, and transcends. I am Audrey Christina Vimaipa, and I will be your host for today's online session. I would also like to greet our J. Marians, students from the JMC College of Law, and our Facebook and YouTube viewers. Hello, everyone. For our first-time viewers, this session is available in both Facebook and YouTube platforms. If you want to know more about the JMC and the trends, you can like JMC's official page, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for you to be updated in our weekly live stream. Also, in this session, don't forget to react, share your emojis, comments, and share your thoughts below or at the right side of this live stream. Today's live stream is brought to you by the JMC College of Law, headed by our beloved and supportive Dean. Dean is Raimito Peter Yon. Thank you so much, Dean. I believe that this is actually the third session spearheaded by the JMC College of Law. It's the holiday season, folks, and for most of us, hindi pala us, since I am unemployed, most of our family members and friends have already received their 13-month pay year-end bonuses, bonuses, grants, and incentives from their respective employers. How do we compute the holiday pay? Overtime pay? How about our leave credits? Is it convertible to cash? Stay tuned and stay with us today for in this session, we will be talking about our labor, labor laws and the rights and benefits of an employee. Without further ado, let me introduce our guest speaker for today's talk. Our guest speaker is the valedictorian of the De La Salle University and Far Eastern University Consortium Dual Degree Program with a double degree in Juris Doctor and Masters of Business and Administration. She had also attended different international law and business summer programs of world-renowned institutions, to name a few, the University of Oxford Summer Law and Business School, Oriel College, CBL International Program in United Kingdom, in United Kingdom, University of San Diego International Student Study Abroad Program in King's College, Dixon Poon School of Law, London, Fordham University College at Lincoln Center, New York, USA. She is currently the legal counsel and legal aid program head of the PBA party list. Apart from that, she is also one of the legal guest panelists in La Kalambuan de la Tanan TV talk show. She is also the founder of the Nograles Law Firm, which specializes in litigation, corporate, and labor practice. An advocate, an ambassador, a lawyer, the beautiful and brilliant attorney Margarita Ignacia B. Nograles. Hello and welcome, Attorney Migs. Hi Audrey, good morning. Grabe, uh, nakakalungkot naman ako kung gusto yung uh, introduction mo sa akin. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, it's a Monday morning and hopefully uh, I get to instill some knowledge amongst our viewers. But before that, I first of course want to thank um, Dean. Dean Tarion, salamat uh, sa opportunity na to. Also to our assistant dean, assistant dean, uh, attorney Resi, who uh, invited me and uh, keep, who keeps inviting me for this event. And I'm very humbled and honored to um, share whatever uh, I know and what I have uh, done through practice uh, in the past uh, short time pa lang naman because uh, I am a new lawyer. But uh, hopefully, this will help our future lawyers um, and also those who are working uh, and listening also to this broadcast. Hopefully, uh, you get to see and learn something, especially on your basic rights and benefits. And of course, um, I, I adjusted it to affect also to see how it affects 
the current situation of our public health crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, um, ano ako, magsisimula na ba ako? Yes, attorney. Thank you po. Um, you may now start. Okay. Um, let me just share. Okay, so good morning again. So uh, for today, um, our, the topic that was given to me is basically on the employment guide and the rights and benefits. And as I said earlier, um, I will be adjusting it to see how this affects our given situation um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, I, tried, uh, I will try my best to not make this as boring. Uh, so, talaga makikinig kayo. So, let me introduce you to my friend. This is si Sam Juan. Alam kong corny siya, pero it helps. Kasi Monday morning ngayon. So, si Sam Juan um, uh, wants to be employed or is trying to figure out first um, kung anong type of employ employee siya. Because before we discuss any rights or benefits, it's first important to know the type of employment that you are in. Why? Because there are certain types of employment, such as there's the regular employee that we know of, there's the project, the casual employee, and the probationary employee. There are differences in these types of employees because uh, my certain rights and my certain um, aspects on employees na yan, and the labor standard laws really uh, apply to the rank and file um, employees or mostly yun nga, yung mga regular employees. So, Project employee. What? Let's let's first discuss that. Um, if your employment is based on a specific project and its completion is determined at the time of the engagement, meaning, uh, napaka specific dapat ng project na at the time na nag-usap kayo ng employer, um, you already determined that I will only be working for this specific project for let's say um, six months, seven months. And it has to be, the keyword here is really the specific. So usually um, an example here would be, let's say that like a big construction company, they have different projects and in an area, in a specific building, in a specific project, that becomes a specific project. And uh, when you get employed for just that specific project and then your employment ends um, at the end of that project and it was determined before you started, then you will be considered um, a project employee. The, the other type of employee naman is the casual. How is this different? This one naman, it's incidental to the business of the employer. And again, definite period of time siya. So incidental meaning, kung um, may, sorry, may business ang isang employer, incidental ang ginagawa mo. So it's not, um, it's not usual and necessary din to business. I will, dis I will discuss this more when we get into the regular employee. Then there's this probationary employee. This is a concept that we usually know. Yan yung trial period. Um, parang, let's say, yung mga relationships, di ba? Minsan, magliligawan kayo. So, kung magliligawan kayo, meron kayong trial period to determine kung um, magiging permanent paying employment nyo. So, this trial period, under the law, is uh, when an employee starts and the maximum period of this trial period as a probationary employee is six months. After that, there's jurisprudence to um, uh, there's jurisprudence that uh, the Supreme Court has held that if um, you're still employed beyond the six month period given by the law, you will already be considered um, a regular employee. So dapat six months na talaga yung probationary employee kasi iba yung mga rights and um, benefits na pwedeng makuha ng probationary employee compared to that of a regular employee. So, happy na siya pag naging regular employee. Why? Um, first, it, and it's very important, especially those who will be taking the bar, um, you will get situations wherein, yan, yung mga, kunyari, six months yan na probationary or six months, six months, six months, or a project employee or other types of employee that you don't determine what kind of employee you are in the beginning. However, if you start working and your job consists of something that is usually necessary or desirable in the usual business of the employer, let's say, ang pinakamadaling example niyan would be a restaurant. Diba? Um, restaurant, hindi yan uh, operate or you can't really have a restaurant without a cook. 
So the cook's job is necessary and desirable in the usual business of the employer. So kahit sabihin niya, um, temporary ka lang, or hindi ka muna regular, hindi ka bibigyan ng employment contract. Dun sa cook. Once um, that cook starts doing service, tapos tumama na dun sa one year. Kahit continuous yan, sunod-sunod the one year, or minsan, papapasukin, may one month na wala, pero one year na siya of service. That already becomes a regular employee. Of course, um, usually, the ba, uh, meron din naman yung regular employee, you will see that already in your employment contract when you start your work. But in these aspects, um, you have to look into the law protects um, labor, the laborers, the employees, by ensuring that regardless of the continuity or if the work done is um, broken, uh, by the time that you hit that one year mark and your work is necessary for the business. Meaning, kung hindi mo ginagawa yung trabaho na yun, um, ay kung, kung natanggal ka dun sa trabaho na yun, or you stop doing what job was assigned to you, um, the business operation would re- be rendered null. Parang hindi siya mag operate So with these two aspects, you become a regular employee. And why is this important? Ito ka, bakit happy si Sam, si Sam Juan? Dahil, uh, pag regular employee ka na nga, um, you already will have these benefits, these basic rights and benefits that are uh, given to us by the labor code or yung uh, aspeto ng labor na, tinatawag na labor standards. Okay. So when you start, these are the basic requirements that you're um, required to uh, have. You have the SSS, the Social Security System. It's under the SSS law. Um, the PhilHealth contribution. So, um, yeah, yung, yung, pag nakuha niyo yung pay nyo, your first payroll, uh, you'll see it, nakadeduct yung mga um, requirements na to. Pag-ibig, uh, contribution, that's also required. Um, hindi siya love life. Pag-ibig po siya, iba siya. Uh, hindi lahat nagkaka love life, but uh, take note that if the gross income is um, actually this is supposed to be below one five, then one uh, percent in contribution ng employee and then two percent ang employer. I will just correct this. Um, and if it's above one thousand five hundred, then two percent yung magiging contribution ng both employer and employee. Um, when you also are employed, you have that withholding tax on compensation. On the part of the employers, it's required that you withhold nila yung tax on your salary. And it's mandatory to have these occupational health and safety standards. So you're supposed to really have um, a safety officer um, in every workplace. Okay. So these mandatory employee benefits. Um I will go through them, um, but it's, it is very, very essential that it's, it, it's usually a common notion within people that it's mandatory, to, I have to do this, this, that. And then some people say, bakit wala akong ganyan? Okay, let me just clarify, and especially for those who are reviewing, you should know this, and those who will take the bars, most especially. Um, the labor code does provide the labor standards for rank and file and employees. However, we always have to look into the exceptions given by the law, which are these um, standard um, minimum requirements given by the law do not apply to certain employees. Ano mga yon? In yung yan, government employees, managerial employees, other m- members or officers of the managerial staff, Domestic servants, workers paid by results, non-agricultural field personnel, and members of the family of the employer. Um, and this is a tip during bar exams. Usually, mahaba yung mga facts na ibibigay sa inyo. But um, once you see that there is an aspect there na government employee, yung tao na yan, or manager yung yan, kahit ano pang situation, kung ipapakompute ka ng standards over time and whatsoever, um, this does not apply. So also for those listening, kahit hindi kayo mag-bar, um, this is the reason why may mga ibang employees that mandatory yung mga benefits na to, and there are other employees na um, hindi naman nag apply sa kanila. 
So the number one that uh, is essential for these employees where the labor law standards apply is this, this minimum wage. Uh, your minimum wage would vary because it depends on the uh, dole wage order that will be released. Um, it's different for areas and NTR different than here um, sa region, uh, region 11. So you first, for employers also, you have to look into that to know the minimum wage. Again, minimum wage, uh, yung labor standards only complies to, uh, uh, only means that the employers should make sure that the minimum requirement provided by law is uh, followed. However, this does not stop employers, siempre, to give uh, uh, to be more generous and give higher than uh, the minimum wage. Uh, employer uh, employees are entitled to the meal meal periods. Yeah, sixty minutes. Yeah, um, so one hour. The weekly rest period. Yeah, pag nagtrabaho na for um, six normal work days. This consecutive yan, kailangan on the next day, on the seventh day, after the six work days, meron kang 24 hours na uh, that you really have to rest. You're also uh, entitled to overtime pay. Siyempre, holidays, holiday pay, the night shift differential um, on certain times of the night, yun, sa gabi nga. Um, and of course, the 13th month pay na uh, alam ko ngayon na yung issue siya. But it is a mandatory employee benefit. So even with the COVID situation, because it's mandated by law, it really has to be given. And December 21 ngayon, and dapat on or before the 24th. So for those na hindi pa rin nagbabayad because they think it's not uh, mandatory, uh, it is mandatory and may penalty po yun kung hindi makapagbayad at hindi po ma-report na nagbayad. So meron pa po kayong three days. Kasi uh, hanggang 24. December 24 at the end of each year. Okay, so this is um the overtime, yung sample nga sa overtime work and the overtime pay. This is under the labor code. Um, and there are different ways to compute these uh, overtime work. So for example, if there's overtime work performed on an ordinary day, Meaning, hindi siya, hindi siya yung rest day mo, hindi siya special holiday, hindi siya regular holiday. So special holidays that are, um, uh, nakikita natin sa news kasi biglang sanabi ng mahal natin presidente na biglang, uh, ay, ano, special holiday siya. Yun, dun pumapasok yung mga differences and the percentages on the, um, the holiday pay computation uh, and uh, the overtime. Uh, when you work on a holiday. So, minsan may mga yan, may mga sobrang masipag, di ba? So, there would be um, computation on the overtime on an ordinary day na um, 8 to 5 job, tapos kailangan mo mag-overtime, mag-OT ka, may computation. Pero minsan may mga sobrang uh, masipag na mag-overtime na sila while working on a holiday. Yan yung mga... Uh, Ang dami na lang energy, but respect to those na kaya talagang gawin yun. Um, and uh, I guess, ano, ganyan talaga minsan pag kailangan, di ba, when you work for uh, for living and then you, re you really work hard for your family as well. Marami kayong pinapakayan. So, ganito pa yung computation niya. This is really based on the labor code. So, kung yung ordinary day, for example, and then you do overtime, more than the 5 p.m. Um, time that is allotted dun sa kung ano man na dun sa employment contract nyo on an ordinary day, then you add 25% to your basic hourly rate. And then yun nga, kung um, may rest day or on a special holiday, katas may overtime ka pa, you add 30% of your, uh, you add pa 30% the basic hourly rate, and then you include pa the 30% additional cost. Uh, compensation. Um, I can send this handout or this um, PowerPoint later on um, for those who will ask. I think Audrey, I think I will coordinate na lang after this. Um, it's the same for this, um, the computation on holiday pay naman to. So 
uh, if you work on your hog day pay or schedule dress day. So if you work on your schedule dress day, you know, 30% of your regular wage of additional mom compensation and all that. So I can send this para uh, meron kayong uh, basis. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Yeah, 13th month pay. Yeah, it, it applies to rank and file employees regardless of the designation. And what is it? It's one twelfth of the total basic salary earned. To give you a siguro mas okay na view on how it's really computed, you have your um, basic uh, monthly salary and then your length of employment um, divided by 12 months, diba? So, kunyari, 20,000 ka, bago ka lang, 20,000 yung in-earn mong basic salary. So, wala yun yung mga additional yung mga allowances, benefits, just the basic salary. And you've only worked for three months, buong year. Yung 20,000, mumultiply mo siya dun sa three months kasi yun lang yung time na nagtrabaho pa. Um, this year, uh, you divide it by 12, you get 5,000. So that means your 13th month pay will be 5,000 because you still have to multiply that with the length snap of your employment. Okay, I hope you understand that. Um, then you have the leaves. What are the leaves? You have the service incentive leave, which is um, the one year survey, uh, one year one year service, and you have the five day pay. Um, expanded maternity leave for those who um, are pregnant ngayon, uh, 105 days na siya. There's the paternity leave naman for the fathers, but take note that um, maliban sa seven days siya, it's only for the four, first four deliveries and kailangan legitimate new spouse. Um, then there's the solo parent leave. So kung single mom, single parent ka, um, then you have the seven working days every year, um, and you have to have rendered one year of service. Then you have the vows you leave or the violence against women and children leave, and you have the uh, special women's leave. So you mga uh, gynecological disorders, um, meron yang leave that is also given by uh, the law. Okay, so how does this um, pandemic? the public health crisis um, come into play now. Um, there's other uh, establishments and other employers that started to gradually um, operate and let employers in, uh, employ their employees in, in so workplace nila. So um, if you look into the Dole Labor Advisory number 17 series of 2020, Doon nakasulat yung mga kailangan gawin, gawin ng mga employers as a way to prevent na and control the spread of the COVID-19. So may mga nakasulat doon on the dapat may washing of hands, dapat um, may uh, alcohol in, uh, in, in certain areas, yung mga gagawin doon sa common areas na madadaanan and everything ng mga employees. So um, if you want to read more on that, Especially those who have businesses or you know, employers, you really have to look into that to see how if you're planning, especially to start operating next year um, gradually, then you have to look into that. Kasi nandun nakasulat yung mga aspeto ng um, uh, kailangan gawin ng employer dun sa workplace. Uh, but the thing is now, di ba narinig natin yung work from home, work from home. Um, actually, even before this COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, pandemic had happened, meron na tayo uh, yung telecommuting app. So it became, it, it became relatively easier to adopt a work-from-home situation because there was already uh, a, an existing law that dealt with these employees working from home via uh, electronic means, yung internet. So... Uh, to help na minimize the spread of COVID-19, uh, the advisory, this labor advisory number 17, uh, enumerates and states that it's only when feasible, meaning kung kaya ang gawin ng employer, uh, must sustain and it will be very productive for their employees to work from home. Um, and 
uh, you have to look into the aspects of the telecommuting app, which is under the dollar department order number 202 um, 19 series of 2019. So, yan din po, you can look into that to look into what type of um, limitations or rules or um, standards and ano sinasabi ng batas on this telecommuting app, uh, telecommuting arrangement wherein nag work from home na and via the internet yung pagsasend ng work or having meetings or even di ba ito, uh, mga ganitong klaseng uh, meeting, seminar, webinar, there. Um, and hindi lang naman constrained yung employers for that, you can also have uh, an alternative work scheme. Um, what is important is if you ad uh, uh, adopt these measures, you have to give notice to the DOLE. And there's a certain form that uh, is required or published on, the, on their website. So if you're going to adopt this, you have to give notice and uh, let them know on this alternative work scheme that you will be doing. Um, again, it is important to, 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 to read this advisory because it states that um, these adjustments are implemented and effective during this public health crisis. So, pwedeng later on, pag wala na na lift na to, diba, things will change. And we will see if what what uh, what will happen or what Dolly will, will uh, release again for another advisory in terms of when this public health crisis is lifted. And um, it's important that if there's any change, uh, any change in the wage uh, benefits, in the payments, um, in the adjustment of the, the amounts or whatsoever, um, that the employer and the employee should discuss, the employee should give his consent and kailangan in writing yan. So that is uh, an important aspect dito sa uh, pag-adjust ng mga employers and of course on the employees part uh, to address this uh, public health crisis that we have due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, sana nakikinig pa rin kayo. So we will go into this concept of uh, non-diminution of benefits just to... Uh, show the importance that during this COVID nga, maraming, alam naman natin, maraming nag-close the business or maraming mga employers na kinuusap yung mga employees nila, baka pwede nilang babaan yung, yung uh, pagbayad nila or whatsoever. Um, it is a rule that actually employers cannot na unilaterally impose a pay cut. That means, hindi pwede basta-basta nalang mag-impose ang employer na okay, um, ayoko, ayoko, hindi ko na kaya magbayad Again, this is why the dollar advisory uh, mandates that the employee consents and it is uh, reduced into writing para nakita nga may voluntary agreement if there's any need na for a pay cut because of losses. Um, but uh, as a way to, siguro for the employers, so, as a way to uh, kind of adjust na lang para hindi nyo kailangan uh, i-cut ang sweldo, you can just reduce um, the work days and the work week. Why? Because in labor, there is the concept and the principle of no work, no pay. So instead of working for five days, if you change it and then you just work for two days, and di babayaran mo lang yung employee mo on those two days. Um, again, also, this is very important for... Um, Aspiring lawyers, uh, especially the the ones who are reviewing uh, the non-diminution of benefits uh, principle and the no work, no pay principle, you really have to take in, that into consideration, especially when you take the bar exam. Okay, so um, post-employment na tayo. That is really, yan, nakikita nyo, ang galit na siya dahil may mga aspeto sa, it's either may aspeto sa um, relationship niya with the employer na nagagalit na siya, hindi niya gusto, gusto niya mag-resign, or um, mayroon siyang ginawang masama and you can't force the employer to 
keep someone employed if diba hindi naman sila masaya or eto because of the the situation of the pandemic uh the business really has to close so first din pinakaalam naman natin is if it's a termination by the employee yan magre-resign siya kasi ayaw na niya or mas gusto niya hindi hindi niya gusto yung yung culture ng company or ayaw na niya nakakahanap siya ng mas okay na trabaho someone offered some something better whatever it is it is always the right of the employee to resign however pag magre-resign ang employee syempre you have to give the written notice din naman to your employer that you're going to be resigning and kailangan one month in advance siya why kasi don't be unfair naman din to your employer, di ba? The, 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 the practical side of it is, you give also your employer time to adjust na nawala ng trabaho yung isa, nawalan, tinanggalan mo ng isang arm. Ang ganun yung mangyayari, syempre, kailangan mag-adjust ng employer, and the employee has to also be fair enough to say, okay, alis ako, pero sige, I will transition also the work pag may bago nang pumasok. However, um, the written notice rule does not apply pag uh, yan, may serious insult na ginawa yung employer, there's the owner and person of, the, of, of yourself or the employee. Um, grabbing treatment, it's very inhuman, uh, inhumane, and then unbearable na siya. Or you, you not commit siya ng crime or any other analogous causes. And then, um, on the aspect naman of the... Uh, termination on the part of the employer. There are two. There, there's always this two-fold due process rule that we have to ensure. Um, for review, the the ones we're reviewing, it's very important. Never tong mawawala sa bar exams. Even for those who um, want to start a business or employers who are watching this, um, you always have to remember that. Uh, pagdating sa labor, there's a substantive due process rule and there's a procedural due process rule. Ano ba yung substantive? Ano ba ang dahilan kung bakit tinaterminate mo yung empleyado mo? So there are two. There's the just causes or the authorized causes, which I will go through one by one. And then there's also the procedural side of it na uh, pagkatapos nyo explain or pagkatapos nyo tingnan nyo substantive rule, may naman procedural aspect, uh, meaning kailangan mong bigyan ng notice ang uh, employee, um, tapos uh, bigyan mo siya ng time to defend himself, or bigyan mo ng notice yung uh, employee, and also uh, ang dole. Okay, let's go through it one by one. Let's start. Uh, let's start with just causes. Ano ba mga to? So it's really it's really four, and then the rest is like a catch-all na all analogous causes. So there's the serious misconduct or willful disobedience, the gross and habitual neglect, the fraud or willful breach of trust by the employee, and there's the commission of a crime, and then yung yeah, mga analogous causes. If you look into the Dole, uh, Dole Department Order number 147-17, uh, this actually breaks down the certain elements and requisites for these causes to apply para makita ng dole, makita nila na substantive talaga at may grounds talaga ang pag-terminate. Um, but I will go through it one by one. First, it's serious misconduct. Ano ba yan? So, your employee did um, certain misconduct na usually, di ba, employees, uh, mga employers, mga big companies, they have uh, the code of conduct or this rule of conduct on every corporation. So usually, pag mayroon ganon, makikita mo yung mga what if, what is a misconduct. But it's really um, yung not going within the, uh, the the norm, this normal conduct in your, in your workplace. Um, but it's not just any misconduct. It has to be grave and aggravated in character. And um, it must be related to the performance of the employee's duties. Tapos, if you continue pa working there, um, it's going to, uh, it's not going to be healthy for the interest of the employer. Uh, kasi, nag-misconduct na nga siya, sobrang laki niya, sobrang uh, laki ng paggagawa niyang misconduct. It's related to the, the, the work of that employee. And 
nakikita mo nang unfit na siya to continue because it's not going to be healthy for everyone, it's not going to be healthy for to, to the business. Then pwede mo nang i-terminate yung uh, employee na yun. For willful um, disobedience, it's really just insubordination if you don't understand. Kasi nung law school ako, parang ano ba yan? It's really just insubordination. So there's um, disobedience na or insubordination. Parang hindi ka, hindi ka nakikinig sa superior mo, kaya siya insubordination. Willful siya or intentional. And the order, syempre, has to be reasonable and lawful. Kung sinabi niya sa yung tumalam ka ng building, huwag mo naman gagawin yun. Tsaka, pag sinabi mong ayaw mo kung ayaw mong tumalam ng building, um, then, i-terminate ka. Hindi naman pwede yun. That is not considered willful disobedience or insubordination. Kasi hindi naman lawful yung ginawang order sa'yo ng boss mo. Diba? Pwede mong tanggihan yung mga ganun. There's also the gross and habitual neglect of duties. Again, tip again for those who will take the bar. The key word here is, the most important is end. Yung gross and habitual. Kung gross lang siya, it's not enough. Kung habitual lang siya, it's not enough. It has to be both. So there's this neglect of duty. And dapat sobrang laking gross neglect of duty siya. And habitual siya. So kung once mo lang ginawa, hindi siya habitual, kahit sobrang laki nun, you can't terminate on this ground. Okay? Tip yun. Um, loss of trust and confidence. Ayan, ang dami na to that. But it's really just an act or remission or concealment na majo-justify yung loss of trust and confidence. The key here is kailangan yung employee uh, is holding a position of trust and confidence. Um, and uh, hindi naman pwedeng sinasabi mo lang, ah, yung employer sinasabi, hindi, ano, I just lost my trust and confidence in you. Um, kailangan talagang uh, merong reason to justify na uh, may loss of trust and confidence because of certain action. Kaya hindi na mabuting uh, mag-continue or hindi na mabuting uh, uh, mag-continue uh, yung trabaho ng employee. Hindi na okay yung relations nila. Wala ng trust and it won't be healthy for the business anymore. Um, so, look into that also. Dapat, pag nabasa kayo ng facts or may nagsabi sa inyo ng anything, yung loss and trust and confidence should really uh, be genuine. And hindi siya dahil lang nag-away, nagtampuhan, siguro inagawa ng boyfriend or something. Hindi man pwedeng ganon. Tapos sabihin, I lost na my trust and confidence in you. Hindi pwedeng ganon. Okay. So, meron din fraud or willful breach of trust. Um, so again, there's this act in, or there's an act omission or concealment done by the employee. Um, tapos, um, my willfulness to do the breach of trust. So it's relatively the same. Um, and it is committed against the employer or the representative. And again, connected nga siya dun sa trabaho uh, ng employee. Okay. Commission of a crime, it's very self-explanatory. May ginawa ng um, crime yung employee. And uh, it is against the employer or immediate family member of the employer or you authorized representative. Okay. Analogous causes. What are some examples? And you can see this in jurisprudence. Or if you need to talk to a lawyer, uh, talk to a lawyer about it if it would fall under analogous causes because this is uh, a very case-to-case -case basis and it's based on facts. Um, you can also contact me or ask me uh, later on if uh, certain uh, aspects tantamount to like, let's say, abandonment. Yeah, and habitual ab uh, absenteeism or, or tardiness that could be grounds for termination. Yung sobrang-sobrang poor performance or may passive offenses, habitual infractions, immorality, conviction of a crime na outside na talagang hindi, hindi okay, diba? uh, to have that kasi it might tarnish the reputation of the company. But syempre may limitations yon. It's uh, more for a one-on-one -on -one discussion na lang siguro po yun, or mga floating status. Um, 
So these are just some examples that the Supreme Court has held na is an analogous cause and um, it falls under just causes for uh, termination. Okay. So yun yung substantial aspect ng um, termination or just causes. Um, the procedural requirement naman um, is three steps. So the first is kailangan mo ng first written notice. Magbigay ka ng service or notice dun sa employee na parang, oh, uh, due to this certain action on a certain date or certain dates, kung gross and habitual yan, di ba? Um, we are giving you opportunity to explain these actions. Kaya yung second aspect is this hearing or opportunity to be heard. And it can be both verbal, yung my conference, and then ipo siya, then mag-explain mag siya, or just written. So, pwedeng mag-reply lang siya dun sa NT or notice to explain. After that, um, the second aspect of this procedural requirement will be the um, second written notice wherein the employer will basically say, okay, uh, after hearing your side, and your explanation, we've considered all the circumstances. But meron pa rin ground na nakita talaga namin that you know, your continued employment is not good for the company, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we have to cause your termination. So that is very, very important. Pag hindi sinundan yung procedural requirement, um, it is going to be uh, 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 my penalty yung employer, and it's usually a fine. So that's just causes. Then we move to authorized causes. Um, I'm almost done. <laughs> so for authorized causes, you have uh, mainly two aspects. You have the business-related causes, and you also have uh, the health-related costs. Um, for business, you have the installation of labor-saving device, redundancy, retrenchment, closure or uh, cessation of business. And for the health-related, go my disease, uh, which also has specific uh, elements and requirements before you can just terminate based on that. So let's go through it. Uh, installation of a labor-saving device. Yan, uh, if if you need to know what that means, it just basically means uh, this is our fear eventually that because of the te technological age, the robots will get our jobs because this is when you start introducing and the employer starts introducing certain machinery or equipment or other devices na dun sa business. The aspect of good faith has to be there. It always has to be there kasi nga, hindi pwedeng ginagawa ng employer to on bad faith or dahil gusto lang niya magtanggal ng mga tao, um, it will not become a valid uh, ground anymore or valid uh, uh, reasoning uh, if may makitang bad faith on the part of the employer. So the good faith aspect is very inimical to all of these. Um, so the purpose nga has to be valid. You introduce these machineries and equipment kasi nga kailangan mo na to save on cost, yung employer, kailangan to save on cost, or kailangan yung ganong klaseng machinery kasi mas magiging efficient. Lalo na pag malaki na yung volume of demand, uh, pag kailangan na ng machine to make things faster, then usually, kailangan na nilang maglagay talaga ng machinery. And since may machine na ginagawa yung trabaho ng, ng, ng employee, then the employee does not have any more reason to stay there. Wala na siyang nagagawang trabaho. Uh, hindi na pwedeng bayaran ng employer yung employee because of the concept, again, of no work, no pay, diba? So, determinate mo na lang siya para pwede na rin maghanap ng ibang trabaho si employee. And, and so there, kaya there's no um, other option available to the employer. Dapat fair and reasonable criteria in selecting the employees to be terminated. So kailangan makita rin na, oh, kung sino yung employees na terminate, meron talagang fair and reasonable criteria na kasi ganito, 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 ganito. Kailangan makita yun. How will Dolly know? 
because may written notice then serve not just to the employees but also to Dole one month prior to the inter the intended date of termination. So um yeah, in November this uh uh November nyo planong i terminate or December nyo planong i terminate yung employee dapat November pa lang or October kung November man uh meron na kayong notice sa employee and sa dole na uh you're intending to terminate these employees uh on a certain date which is a month after that notice why uh it also gives the employee time to start looking for another job and and adjust adjust the burden sa magiging life changing aspect ng buhay niya kasi tinanggalan mo siya ng um means uh ng income so um it 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 it's very important to give notice one month prior to the intended date na of the termination then um separation pay very important the separation pay here is one month or at least one month um pay for every year of service whichever is higher yeah, we have the redundancy. Um, yon yung sinasabi ko nga na meron ng superfluity. So yung position uh, ng employee, yung trabaho niya, uh, may ibang gumagawa ng ganon. So pareho na kayong gumagawa ng same thing. So it's not productive anymore. And because it's not productive anymore, it's more it's more costly to the employer. Uh, hindi naman talaga kailangan ganon, kaya gawin ng isang tao. So, nagkakaroon nga ng ganon, um, superfluous um, position or service na ginagawa yung employee. The positions or the services are in excess nga of what's reasonably demanded. Kaya nga, ganon, when tatanggalin mo na kasi may dalawang tao na ginagawa yung ganong klase ng trabaho. And um, in excess na nga siya, hindi naman talaga kailangan. Uh, good faith again, good faith, and the reasonable criteria in selecting other employees who you will terminate. Um, you kailangan mo really prove yon, de ba? Na may redundancy talaga uh, to establish good faith. Kailangan mo talaga ng pakita new positions nila or itinanggal mo is really redundant. Um, again, the written notice one month prior and the uh, separation pay here is also one month or at least one month pay for every year of service, whichever is higher. Retrenchment or downsizing. Yan yung mga naririnig natin ngayon, di ba, sa panahon ng pandemya. Um, retrenchment is, uh, yan, or downsizing. It's really not closure, pero um, you will remove certain, you will stop a certain division, you're the, you will downsize, matatanggal ka ng mga employees, but you are still relatively operating. The reason behind this is, hmm, Hindi mo, na kaya, hindi mo na kaya, hindi na kaya ng employer to operate on this large scale because nga of the losses. And due to the losses nga, uh, uh, parang mas, mat, mas malaki na yung operational expense ng isang kumpanya. So dahil mas malaki na yung operational expense niya, uh, tatanggal siya ng konti ng mga tao so that the payment of the salary of these employees uh, do not uh, uh, hindi naman siya sobrang mag, basically mag minimize siya ng losses because if you cut down in your employees and you try the best much as you can to save uh, the others and the 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 business then uh, that is one way of ensuring the continuity of the business so kaya kailangan yung losses nito kailangan serious actually hindi yun substantial and you have to show that to the dollar you're doing retrenchment because yeah, you really have losses. Na hindi mo lang talaga kaya yung sustain to ang um, business mo. Then you have the sufficient and convincing evidence of losses. So that's usually the um, financial statements na there is an accredited auditor that really audited everything to ensure and to show that your financial statements really show the serious and actual loss. Good faith again is very important. The fair and reasonable criteria in selecting the employees. And again, the written notice. And here naman, um, your separation pay would be one month or at least one half month uh, pay for every year of service, now, whichever is higher. Why? My losses name. So 
uh, kung sa mga mas matagal na nagtrabaho, uh, nagiging one half month pay na lang siya. Um, if uh, matagal na yung, yung employee doon. And then we have the closure. Closures, the talaga ang wala na. Hindi mo na kayang uh, save yung business ko. So you won't um, downsize. And this is another uh, thing that we see nowadays because of the COVID-19 situation. So the management suddenly, wala, hindi talaga kaya sustain to or sustain yung business. Hindi nila kaya magbayad sa expenses. So they suddenly uh, just decide to close. Or cease their operations. Again, good faith and no other option available. Uh, written notice is very important. And again, because na may losses and it's serious losses, um, the separation pay is one month or at least one, one and a half month pay uh, for every year of service, whichever is higher. Then you have the disease. Um, ito, um, when the employee is suffering from a disease, so it's not COVID. Hindi pwede COVID because, di ba, meron tayong batas ngayon na hindi pwede maging discriminatory dun sa mga COVID-19 patients. You can't even disclose who they are, right? Um, so, yung continued employment is prohibited by law or prejudicial na masyado dun sa health ng co-workers. And there has to be a certification of a competent, again, hindi lang yan kahit sino, yung mga biglang magagawa ng mga medical na yan, uh, kailangan, ah, uh, competent public health authority siya na sinasabi nga na incurable na nga siya within a period of six months. So, kailangan mo nang i-terminate. Kasi nga, you can force employers to keep a peace The same as the closure. Uh, may con- um kung ma-terminate ka due to the authorized causes which is the ter- the um the closure retrenchment uh uh redundancy uh then you're entitled to your final pay labor advisory number 6 years of 2020 will enumerate that uh the limitations for that um and then, yun, sa so mga na-suspend na employees, di ba, yung mga businesses that are non-essential, so who, they're not operating now, um, uh, yung suspension is really not supposed to exceed for six months. But it's important, especially for employers, to know that if you're going to be um, extending this, this six-month period in the suspension of the employment, you have to report the dole. 10 days prior to the effectivity of that uh, extension. And you have to have the consent of the employee. This is very important. And ito, pag na-retrench yung employees nyo, um, you're entitled to separate uh, to, to the separation pay. And if you give your uh, indication, if you give an indication that you desire to uh, return to work pag um, mag-resume yung operations ng business, uh, then uh, you will be given priority. Pero kailangan not later than one month to the resumption of the operations. So, uh, and daming uh, concepts, and daming aspeto. Uh, but uh, thank you for listening. If you need any questions, uh, anything, you can uh, email me. And I'm with JMC School of Law also. I'm a professor, so... Um, there are ways for you to contact me. This is my email, uh, two emails if you need 
anything if you need to schedule if may concerns kayo. Um, and with that, I thank you for listening and I hope you learned something from this lecture. Thank you so much, attorney. Indeed, it's nice to meet you, Sam Juan. Thank you for being with us today. Sana nakuha mo na buo na. Anyway. Audrey, salamat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Attorney, I, hope, I, I hope hindi ka na, ano, hindi ka na bored then. <laughs> Ay, hindi po na, ano po. Actually, na-review po ako sa aking labor. <laughs> I hope, I hope, review ako. So, I hope, ano, I hope it helps. I hope it helps. But um, Audrey, let's talk after because I want to give this uh, for those who will ask. No? So thank you. Thank ah, yes, you attorney. I have, already, I have already compiled some questions. Dalawa lang po. Um, okay. From one, of our, one, from one of our viewers. Um, Hello, attorney. I work in a private company. Our company is required to give bonuses especially this time po na businesses are not doing well again po attorney again uh, um yes go ahead did you get that attorney did you get that attorney yes the question. Yes. Ah, yes yeah um again the ba i laid down the mandatory aspects on employment that's given by the labor code but there's also this concept of management prerogative and pagdating ng mga bonuses, management prerogative yan, meaning it is uh, really just the courtesy and, and it's within the right of the management to determine nga certain aspects. Uh, the labor standards, as I said earlier, really just comprise of the minimum standards that are given by law that the employer should give. These bonuses are part of management prerogative at saka dun sa gusto ng employer, ibigay sa mga employees to keep them happy. So it really depends on what the policy is, the company um, practice, and sa laki ng puso ng employer nyo to give bonuses. But we can look into your employment contract. Kung may employment contract, you can contact me. Because again, it's a very factual basis. There are, there are aspects that play with, alam mo naman yan, Audrey, diba? yung um, company uh, practice. Yes. Yung mga ganyan na may mga aspeto na kung biglang tanggalin ang beneficyo, uh, then that can hurt it. But as I said earlier, during this pandemic, there is the labor advisory um, on the dollar number 19, series of 2020, that if the employer wants to change these benefits, they have to ask you and kailangan may consent mo and it will be placed into writing. Yes. I hope that answers your question viewer so <laughs> our second question attorney she wishes to inquire anonymously okay okay i was covid19 positive and i work in a bank and i was required to work immediately after my 14 day quarantine how can i communicate with my employer po na i don't want to work yet since i don't want to um I don't want to endanger my workmates yes. and everyone. Um, actually, respect po sa because a lot of people, there are some people, not naman a lot, that babalik sa trabaho and will not really think of the health of the others. So it's actually very good that you are considering the health of your uh, co-workers. For that, you actually really have to talk to your employer. Uh, minsan, this is the simplest answer really to tell your employer and say it was positive, alam niyo yon, and you're scared to spread it. Again, hindi ka pwedeng biglang i-terminate because di ba, kailangan may substantial and uh, procedural requirements tayo. Um, but you should not be terminated based on those grounds alone. We have the law. And um, hindi niya pwedeng sabihin, i-terminate ka na dahil hindi ka sumusunod. Uh, based on the just causes, as I explained, because the order has to be reasonable and lawful, right? So, uh, hindi pwedeng ma-terminate on those grounds. I would suggest you talk to your employer and you say that you're not comfortable because it might be inimical to the interests of the company 
or wherever you are working. Um, and should you have a problem, I think you start to consult a lawyer. Pero virtually, ha? Okay, cool. <laughs> let's, let's, let's maintain social distancing. Um, but if you want uh, legal advice, and I'm not advertising, but uh, uh, you can go through our legal aid. Uh, the Nagrales office also has that. So uh, open the man for so that we can discuss should you have any problem. All right. Thank you so much, attorney. At sana magpagaling ka po <laughs> sa ating viewer na nag-ask. Yes. Anyway, do you have any more thoughts to share to our viewers, attorney, or mga pag-greetings po dyan? What is your final message to everyone? Um, I guess I just really want to thank again uh, JNC School of Law. I'm very humbled and honored to be here. Uh, I hope everyone who has been listening is listening. Hindi naman kayo na bore. Uh, I hope I was able to uh, instill some uh, knowledge uh, on their basic rights and benefits. Uh, again, um, the Nagrales Law Firm is there. Uh, I have a legal aid program. Uh, you can approach me for any um, questions, concerns. You can email me. I give my email. Uh, for the students, I am a law professor also. I'm part of the JNC faculty. So um, I think Audrey then, I can talk to Audrey. Kung gusto mong uh, may malalapit sa'yo na uh, would want to discuss or would want to um, ask me for any um labor related concerns or other matters. Basta hindi lang love life. Okay. Hindi ko kaya yung mga discussion ng love life pang legal lang tayo. Um, and of course, you have your labor. <laughs> you also have your labor professors. Magagaling po yung mga professors nyo sa JNC. So I'm just one of those who can help if you need help. Again, thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you to the technical team. Thank you, JMC School of Law. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Assistant Dean. And everyone watching. Maraming maraming salamat po. Once again, we are grateful and delighted to have you here with us, Attorney. Thank you for sharing your valuable time and knowledge. And we also thank our viewers for today. We hope that you have learned a lot because I too have learned a lot in, this, in today's <laughs> session. Uh, we also extend our gratitude to our JMC Ed EduTech support team, Sir Mon and Mamir Ambrosio, Director of JMC Office for Communications, and to everyone who organized this program, as well as the JMC College of Law Assistant Dean, Attorney Resi Rizada, and Dean Israelito Peterion. Stay tuned for more JMC EduTrends, Inform, Inspire, and Transcend session throughout the week and for the weeks to come. Don't forget to click the notification ring below or at the right side of this tab. Stay safe, stay healthy, and may everyone enjoy the holiday season at the comfort of your homes. This has been your host, Audrey Christina Maipa, now signing off. Thank you, Attorney. That ends another substantive discussion on JMC Edit Trends, produced by the Jose Maria College Communication Affairs Office. On behalf of our founding president, Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy, thank you for being with us. Join us again next time for another interesting, inspiring, and transcending discussion on JMC Edit Trends. Bye everyone and keep safe.